Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Google Cloud Next 2018. Brought to you by Google Cloud and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to our live coverage of theCUBE here, exclusive coverage of Google Cloud, Google Next 2018. I'm John Furrier, co-host with Dave Vellante, both co-founders of theCUBE at SiliconANGLE. We're here with our special guest, Diane Green, who's the CEO of Google Cloud, legend in the industry, former CEO of VMware, among other great things. Diane, great to see you, great to have you on, on theCUBE for the, for the first time. Really fun to be here, I'm, yeah, really happy to be here. So one of the things about Google Cloud that's interesting is that we've been observing is, and you mentioned on stage, two years now in, you're starting to see some visibility into what Google Cloud is looking to do. They're looking to make things really easy, fast, and very developer-centric open source. Culture of inclusion, culture of openness, but hardcore performance. Talk about that vision and how that's translating as you're at the helm driving the, driving the big boat here. Yeah, sure. I mean, obviously we had this amazing foundation with you know, our modern enterprise company, Google Cloud, right? But, but what, we're, what we've done with Google Cloud is we've, um, we've realized that just, I mean, Google values engineering so much, and so do our customers. So one is we're taking a very engineering-centric approach. People really love our open source philosophy. And then, uh, you know, we're so doubled down on both security and artificial intelligence. And so if you have this underlying, you know, incredibly advanced scaled infrastructure, high performance, security, availability, and all the goodness, and then you start taking people somewhere where they can really take advantage of AI, where they can be more secure than anywhere else, and, and you have the engineering to help them you know, really exploit it and to listen to the customers about where they want to go, um, that's, we're just getting incredible results. You know, people, I mean, I've been following Google since the founder when Ser Sergey and Larry started. It's been fun yeah. to watch. They really are the biggest cloud ever to be built, and Facebook certainly so we is We have seven applications that have over a billion active users. Massive scale. And actually, we're just this week on track to have the next one drive. 25 years of expertise, I've seen them move from buying servers to making their own, better airflow, better data, just years and years of trajectory of economies of scale. And then when Absolutely. Google started cloud a couple years ago, it's like, oh great, I want, everyone wants to be like Google, so we'll just offer our Googleness to everyone. And, and they're like, wait, that didn't really work. People want to consume what Google has, not necessarily be Google, because not everyone can be Google. So there's a transition where Google's massive benefits are now being presented and sold, or or offered as a service, this is a core strategy. What, what, what should people know about? Because people are squinting through all this market share, this company's got more revenue than that one. If I bundle in AdWords and G Suite, you'd be the number one cloud provider on the planet by far. So buyers are trying to figure out who's better for what. How do you talk to customers if someone says, are you behind, are you winning? How do I know if Google Cloud is better than the other cloud? Well, the only way you're going to know is to kind of do a proof of concept and see what happens, you know, pull back the covers, but, but what we can explain to people is that we're, we're so, you know, so one is it's all about information. That's, that's why I say Google's a modern enterprise company because we are about it, you know, I said that in my keynote, you know, we take information, we organize it, and we supercharge it. You know, we give a lot of intelligence to it, and that's what every business needs to do, and we're the best in the world at it. And then AI is this revolutionary thing going on, you know, where you can just apply it to anything. You know, I, someone made a joke, about cloud, they said it's like butter, it's better with everything. Well, the cloud is better with everything. Well, I think it's AI, actually. And, and so, when you combine uh, you know, our, our ability to manage data, our ability to do artificial intelligence with our open source and then our security, um, not to mention the fact that the underlying infrastructure is everybody pretty much acknowledges the most advanced technology in the world. It's, it's a pretty unbeatable competition, I mean, um, combination, but uh, the thing is, 
you know, we needed to bring it to market in a way that everybody could trust it and use it. And so one of the first things we did, which we hadn't had to do as a serving our internal customers, have roadmaps. So customers can know what's going on and what's coming when and, you know, that we won't ever turn something off and all those things that an enterprise company expects and needs, yeah, you know, yeah. for good reason. I have to say the the our engineering team is loving working with external customers. And that was, everybody said you'll never get that engineering team caring about customers. And I knew we would because we had the same quality engineers at VMware and they loved it. And I knew it was just a matter of getting everybody to, you know, to see yeah. how many interesting things are, you know. And that we problems can, to solve, by the way, too. There's so many problems to solve and we, we're having, you know, even broader impact now going to the enterprise, going to every company. Well, you said in your keynote, IT is no longer a cost center, it's a key driver of business. Tech is now at the core of every product. If we think about, you go back 15 years, it, I remember somebody said to me, have you seen what VMware can do and how fast it can spin up a server? <laughs> that was cost, right? Yeah, yeah. So, talk about the enterprise today. When you talk to customers, what are those problems they're solving? What are those opportunities? Yeah, well, so you, there is a class of customers, like typically the internet companies, they are looking for the best infrastructure, they are looking to save costs, but they're also looking, you know, people are realizing why should I do it all? Why don't I co concentrate on my core competence? So we have, you know, the, it's well known we've had Snap, you know, from day one, and, and uh, we were in their prospectus when they filed to go public. And then uh, we have Twitter, we recently announced Spotify and so forth. So those are very technically sophisticated people. They come, they use BigQuery, they use you know, our data analytics and our infrastructure. But then you get into the businesses and we've taken this complete verticals approach. And, and so they're coming to solve their, you know, whatever problems it is they have and because we have these exceptional tools and we're kind of building platform tools, a lot of them with applied AI in every vertical. They can come to us and we can talk to them in their language and solve their problems. And, and you know, I talked about it in my keynote, you know, with ITB, you know, it's driving revenue, it is, Everybody's re-engineering how they do business. It's the most exciting time I've ever seen in the enterprise. I mean, I've always thought tech was interesting, but now it's yeah. the whole world. It's everywhere. I mean, yeah. you, you, you have an engineering background, went to MIT, studied there. If you were the lead engineer of most of these companies that are re-architecting and re-engineering, I mean, they're almost re-platforming re their companies. Uh, they let to think differently. It's not just an IT purchase, because they're no. not buying IT anymore. They're, deploying platforms. Well, and they're digitizing their whole business and they're, they're using their information, they're using their data. They, you know, that changes so many business processes. It changes what they can do with their customers, how they can talk to them. You know, it yeah. changes how they can deliver anything. And, and so, it's just a radical rethink of, you know, it's so amazing when we, when we work deeply with a customer because you know, they might start out talking about infrastructure and how they're going to move to the cloud and how we can help them. And, and then, you know, we start talking about all the things we can, our, our technologies can do for them and what's possible. And, and they'll kind of pause and then they'll come back and they'll go, holy cow, we are rethinking our whole company. We're redefining our mission. We're, we're much more aspir, you know, it's very exciting. I had a chance to interview some of your employees and the, the phrase comes up, kid in the candy store a lot. Mm -hmm. So I got to ask you, with respect to customers, is there more of an engineering focus as you, as you see some of the adoption, you mentioned Twitter, Spotify, these are internet companies, these are nerds, they love to geek out, they, love, they know large scale, so not a hard sell to get them over the transom uh, into, into, the, into the, the scale of the cloud. As you get to the enterprise, is there a makeup, is there an orientation that attracts Google to them and where, why are you winning these deals? Is it the tech, the people, the process? How would, I mean, obviously the tech's yeah, solid, but. it's a but combination of all of the above because what'll happen is we'll all come in and start pitching these companies and, and what we do, you know, we really understand what they're trying to do and then we, we send in the appropriate engineers for what it is they're trying to do and they, you know, there, you get this engineer-to-engineer -engineer collaboration going that uh, 
you know, lets us know exactly how to help that company. So they give you a list and you go, check, I've done that, okay, next, check, check, do you go down the checkbox? I well, mean, or we is it brainstorm joint? with them. Okay. And that's, companies like that. Because they, you know, they don't necessarily understand all the technology. I always like to think what an engineering org does is one, it gets requirements from the customers about what they need and, and we call that all the table stakes and we get it done and uh, some of it's pretty hard to do. And, uh, but then, you know, the engineers, they, after they get to know customers, they can invent things that the customer had no idea was possible but that like solves their problem in a much more powerful way. And so it, that's the magic. And, and, and that's how we're going into the market. Um, and, and wherever we can, we'll take things and make it available to everybody. We're very, you know, that open source philosophy of all technology is for everybody. Yeah. And uh, it's, a, it's a very nice environment to work in. You, uh, the number one sound bite John and I have been talking about all day about your keynote was security's the number one worry, AI is the number one opportunity. So when you- I, I was like writing my keynote yeah. and it hit me. I'm like, oh, this is how <laughs> it pretty, is. Yeah. And, uh, so please, when yeah. you talk to customers, how are you addressing you know, that worry and how are you addressing the opportunity? Yeah, well we're pretty proud of our security you know, because it really is at every layer, very deeply integrated, thought through. I mean, we don't think in terms of a firewall because if you get inside that firewall, all bets are off. And so it's really everything you do needs to be looked at and, and, and you've got to make sure and, and that's why like the Chromebook with the hardware-based two-factor authentication and G Suite, I mean, you know, we, we had a Google which went to that, and since we did, not a single one of our 85,000 employees have been fished. Kind of amazing. Yeah. Because it's the biggest source Spear of attack. Spear phishing is the easiest way to get in. Yeah, but you cannot do it once you have that combination. And so, it's, you know, it's all the way up there, all the way down to, you know, proprietary chips, that check that the boot hasn't been tampered with every time that you boot. Uh, you know, our new servers all have it, our Chromebooks all have it, and then you know, every, you know, everything in between. So, so we think we have an incredibly powerful, we had to add in enterprise features like fine-grained security controls, ways to let our users manage their own encryption keys, but anyhow, we have a, you know, just a, a really phenomenal, and our data centers are so, Bulletproof. We have a, um, you know, those catchers that'll pick up a car. We even have one of those. We had a UPS truck try and tailgate someone in, got picked up in it. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> I mean, the magic of the engineering at Google. This is the this is the value that we hear from customers is that okay, we get that the technology and the engineers are there. We see the technology, but you've been involved in transforming the businesses. VMware, Dave was mentioning, certainly changed IT and it was new and transformed. Cloud's transformational as well, and we were just talking earlier about the metaphor of the horse and buggy versus the car. Yeah, things get automated away, which means those jobs now are gone with new functionality. And you're seeing a lot of automation, machine learning. Auto ML is probably one of the hottest trends going on right now. AI operations seems to be replacing what was categorically an industry, IT operations. So you're starting to see IT again being disrupted. It's and the shifting into the value up the stack. What, and this is developers. That's the point, yeah. Because I don't feel like, yes, all those really painful jobs are going away. That no one wanted to do. <laughs> that no one wanted to do anyhow. VMware was the same way. You know, we eliminated tons of drudgery. And AI is doing it systematically across every industry. But then you repurpose people, because we still need so many people to do <laughs> things. Like I gave the example in my keynote about the dolphin fins and using auto ML to find them and, and identify them. Well that was PhD researchers and professors were looking at that. Is that what they should be doing? I don't think so. You free them up 
and think of the discoveries they're going to make. I mean, humans are really smart. I think all humans are. We just have to do a better job at helping them realize their potential. I want to talk about that. That's a great point. Culture is everything. I also interviewed yeah. some of your folks. I just wrote an article on my Forbes column about the four most powerful women in Google that aren't Diane Green. It was some of your key lieutenants. That was and, a great piece, yeah. And the human story came up where you have machines and humans working together. This is, and then one of, one of the, the conversations was artistry is coming back to software development. And we were on this thread of modern software developers is not just your software engineer anymore. You don't need three PhDs to write code. The aperture of software development engineering and artistry and craft is coming back. What's your reaction to that? Because you're starting to see now a new level of range of software opportunities for everybody. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, my daughter is a computer science major and she just taught a coding camp this summer and they started from kindergarten and went up. And it was amazing to hear what those kids were doing. And, and uh, so I think a lot of applications are almost going to be like assembling Lego. I mean, you have the, all these APIs you can put in, you have all these open source libraries, you have serverless, so you just plop it in these uh, containers and everything is taken yeah. care of for you. It's, it's like, a, you're right, it's like a new age in building applications. I mean, you will still need, I mean, Google needs system engineers, yeah. but. Under but, the hood, you got to fix yeah. some engines. Yeah. You need mechanics. Yeah, right. You guys talked yeah. about this in your article, like the shift toward creativity becomes a much more important ingredient. So creative, and also the human computer interface and the user, you know, the UX. I mean, you heard from Target, I was talking to him, they do an agile workshop for six weeks for all their developers and they, their productivity is, he said, an order of magnitude higher. And I think the productivity of developers in the cloud with all these technologies is across the board an order of magnitude better at a minimum. Yeah, Mike, with, Ma Mike McNamara was CIO at Target, yeah. was up on stage yeah. with you today. Yeah, he's impressive. a really impressive person. Yeah. So I want to ask you about differentiation. You talked about open source, and specifically your contribution to open source. That's different uh, from most cloud players. The other thing you talked about, and I want to understand it better, is that you provide consistency with a common core set of primitives. What do you mean and why is that important? Right, well so when we build out all our services, we want to have one uniform way of thinking about things. So how do you do queuing? It's common across every service. How do you do security? It's common across every service. Which means it's very intuitive and, 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 and it's easy to use the system. Whereas if, now it slows you down. Software development at that layer, when you have to do that, goes more slowly. And if you have to make a change in, you know, in a core primitive, everybody's got to change, right? However, you take the the other side where everybody just builds a service vertically and with disregard for how things are done, and now you've got this potpourri of ways to do things, and everybody has to have specialized expertise in every service. So it really slows down the, the operators and the developers and, and you get a lot of inconsistency. So it's super high value and I have to believe that's really going to, people are going to start appreciating that and it's really going to so pay found, I think it's a huge problem that people yeah. don't really understand because it, it, just as an yeah. example, if you're building out a data pipeline and tapping all these different services, right. you've got then different APIs for every single service that you have to become an expert at. That's exactly and right. And that's a real challenge. Now, like you said, so from so, a software development standpoint. And it's annoying. It's so <laughs> yeah. Yes, and, that's, and so users who are really under understand this stuff are getting annoyed with yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But well, it's an interesting trade-off well, and a philosophy that you've taken that's quite yeah. a bit different. Well, Google has such a high bar for how they do well, things. Well, if you do the, found, that's, if that sounds foundational though. It's slower, but it's more foundational. But doesn't that accelerate the value? Oh. So yes. the value's accelerated significantly. Oh, yes. So you go a little slower well, down our here. Our going a little slower makes everybody else go way faster at a higher quality. So it's, you know, it, it definitely, mm. the trade-off you know, it wins. Diane, thank you for taking the time to join us on theCUBE today. Oh, I want to ask one, one final okay. question. <laughs> Culture at uh, in Google Cloud, what, how would you describe the DNA uh, within Google Cloud? A lot of energy, a lot of enterprise expertise move, coming in big time, a lot of great stuff happening. What's, how would you describe the DNA of Google Cloud? I would say just tremendous excitement because we're, we're, we're just moving so fast, we're scaling so fast, we're sort of barely in control, it's moving so fast. 
but just such good things happening and, and the customers are loving us and it's so rewarding and, and so everybody's you know, increasingly taking more and more ownership and, and you know, really making sure that we do super high quality work for our customers and it just, everybody's proud. We're all really proud. What, what's the one thing that you want people to know about that they may not know about Google Cloud that they should definitely know about? Jeez. You know, it's worth coming to and giving it a try because, um, long, you know, this is, well, the biggest thing is how early we are and, and you know, you, it's the right place to be because you want the highest quality, you want, you want the most advanced technology and AI and security are pretty important. All right, Diane Green, the CEO yeah. of Google Cloud here inside theCUBE, live in San Francisco. We're in the Moscone yeah. Center. I'm Jeff Furrier, Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with more live coverage. Stay with us for more from day one of three days of live coverage. We'll be right back. <laughs>